Hey folks, Lance Mechanics here today, and today I'm checking out a pretty slick little tool that might save you some major headache if you're working around HVAC and any AC system. It's the TopRes RT389 refrigerant leak detector. It's rechargeable, compact, and surprisingly sensitive, and I think it lives up to all the hype. So let's get into it. First off, what is it? This is a refrigerant leak detector that works with CFCs, HCFCs, HFCs, HFOs, and even hydrocarbons like R600A or propane. So what I'm talking about is R134A, R411A, R1234YF. And if it's a common in HVAC or automotive, this thing will pick it up. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this little beast. <laughs> no one keeps that. Um, no labels on it, pretty, pretty standard. Pull it open. Instruction manual and a little safety pocket here. Uh, here's the device. Feels pretty good. Um, no batteries. My goodness, don't get me started on batteries with uh, refrigerant detectors. So it's gonna have a Type-C USB port. Awesome, perfect. Uh, right out of the box, this feels solid. You got a 14 and a half inch gooseneck right here. A probe for tight spots, you know, you bend it anywhere, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so let's fire this up. All right, we'll pull off the, everybody loves that. So to fire this up, you have to hold the power button and then you'll get a little display here as we're seeing. All that going through the little checks. Now you should be able to disengage and it'll continue to fire up. Come on, here we go. So now you have this little screen here and it's all controlled. <laughs> doing this little checks. Pretty neat. I've never had a, a multi, or sorry, a refrigerant detector doing anything like this, so that's pretty good. Decibels, so, oh, where we turn them up. Look at all the screens right here. So this is gonna take a few seconds for me to figure out. <laughs> all right, so our first screen right here is gonna be a chart. Uh, you're gonna see bar graphs in here if you get near refrigerant. The second screen is doing it a little differently. So as you get closer, it's gonna be audible and show you a visual, very neat. So if you click here in the center, you have your functions, we'll go in there. You can set your date and time, dis oh, date and time, uh, display, let's go for display. Maybe we can, oh, it's gonna take a second to <laughs> back. It's not intuitive, the side to sides are up and down. So click on display. Oops, immediately doing that. So we'll turn this down for the video. Hopefully that you guys like that. Click down, sleep brightness. Good. Okay, and we'll go back. Alarms and switch. Ooh, vibrator setting, very nice. Uh, buzz detector, I'm not sure what that is. Um, usually anything that vibrates in your hand or has a buzzer or the light on the end here, fantastic. Uh, we'll turn the light off for now. Kind of scroll through here. Okay, nope, light's still on. Okay, so that's not that function. Go back, let's get out of here. So, alarm switch, languages, I'm not gonna mess with that. Factory reset if you ever have, so we'll go back. Oh, no, I don't wanna go in there. <laughs> Advanced menu, select. Uh, okay. No, let's not do that. Zero, zero, zero. Enter, if that's the one you want. Maybe that's for, hmm, I'll have to check into the functions here. You're learning as I learn. So, it pays to read the instructions. System password is 222, we'll hit enter. Oh no. This one locked out. Hmm, we'll get back to that. All right, so now that we're back, uh, you gotta hold the function button after putting 222. Perfect, so now we can go into the sensor settings and it's on high right from the factory. So we'll click on that. You can go medium, low, keep it on high. Um, but please be warned, experience tells me when it's on high, this thing will react to undercoating. It doesn't matter who makes it. There's something in undercoating when the sensitivities get pushed to the max that really, Affected, unfortunately, so we're gonna out of here. We'll see what else we can do in here. Backup settings, what's this? Cancel, we're gonna hit cancel. Out of there. So, 
information. Well, let's check what's in the information. Stuff. Stuff I don't know. Uh, software version, batteries. All right, so let's get to the other stuff. All right, so let's talk about this. The light, hold, turn it off. Uh, it's not turning it off, wrong screen. So this thing has a really loud audible buzzer. It shakes in your hand, 90 decibels, fantastic. Um, the big thing here is it says it can detect three grams per year. That's small of a leak. That's wild for a tool in this price range. And honestly, I've tested around enough now with my cars there, like when you just pull the cap off, there's residual in there. It doesn't matter what system, you're gonna have a little residual there. This thing's picking it up, that's pretty impressive. And it gives you real-time readings and a little graph trend on here. And it allows you to track how bad the leak is. But honestly, if you have an AC machine on, if it's coming into the shop, there's a bad leak, people notice. So I found with the R1234YF is you generally, you generally didn't have dye leaking out, but you had oil residue on the components. And I noticed this thing is picking it up where it is very slightly, so that's important. Because uh, with 1234YF, I found that uh, you didn't have any of the dye. For some reason, it was just such a thin molecule, and you had the oil come out, but you didn't have the dye. I don't know how it worked. Uh, some people, somebody can explain in the comments who's a lot smarter than me. So this thing's picking it up. That's impressive. So as I mentioned early on in the video, no batteries, USB-C rechargeable, and they claim it has eight hours of battery life. So. <laughs> Everybody knows the frustration. You go to pull these out of your case and the batteries are dead. Now you're hunting down uh, AA batteries. The whole world's on USB-C right now, so that's good. Um, it's got the high, low, medium sensitivities. Perfect, everybody wants to you know, have different sensitivities. You're chasing a really fine leak. Again, fine leaks, this will pick up a lot of stuff. Even your breath, your carbon dioxide, you gotta be careful. So sensitivity, important, and then has an indicator too. So. Who's this for? Oh, I want to talk about something. This goes for all refrigerant testers or any type of tester for gases. They have a shelf life. If you work in a shop and they have the same one of these they've had for the last 10 years, I want you to grab it and chuck it in the garbage. Um, most places or most sensors are good for five years. You can try and calibrate them, you know, have test samples. Five years, five years, five years, five years, these should be replaced. Um, I might even be more proactive and say four years because uh, it might have been on the shelf for a little bit. I'm not saying this brand particularly, but um, here in the manual, find it really quick, they weren't shy. Um, sensor life, less than five years. And that's something uh, people don't really talk about, especially your bosses, because, oh no, I don't want to spend 150, 300, whatever they cost. All they see is numbers. They don't see diagnostic troubleshooting. Imagine you had a faulty one of these and you called an expensive component. You don't want to do that. All right, so who's this tool going to be for? Um, definitely HVAC guys. I don't see why they wouldn't be able to use it. For the everyday use, it's pretty solid. Um, automotive techs, same thing. Uh, semi trucks, why not? Um, it's definitely gonna be good for the DIYers too. It's such a solid piece of a refrigerant detection device for its price range. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be too surprised if you start seeing uh, them coming out with uh, other options. It's not a fluke or a field piece level tool, but for the price and the sensitivity, you cannot go wrong. All right, so if you're thinking about uh, picking one up or possibility, I'll drop a link in the comments. Post what you're using or what your favorite uh, leak detection tool is, and I will try and find one in the future and compare it to. Uh, AC leaks are common. You don't have to get too fancy. Troubleshooting false positives, that's a, that's a whole other thing, and I would love to compare more. So drop a link or post what you try, and we'll go from there. Lance Mechanics, have a good one.